this. I don't have my radiator yet. It never showed up yet, but we'll get this prepped. The old one removed. So I'm gonna remove all my hoses. I don't think you have to, but I'm gonna remove them just so there's more room in here. I don't think this rad support has to come off. We'll see once we get on this. I think this rad should be able to swing back far enough to be able to pull it out once all these holes are removed. Uh, down there we have some transmission coolers it looks like. Maybe some oil coolers. Oil cooler lines I should say. So these will have to be removed. And we'll see how much fun that was, that's going to be. These clips have to come out. The clip is right here from the right, from the left side. Okay, guys, so the rat support does have to come up because there's screws underneath it. So the rat support is easy. Four 10 mil bolts on each side and then one more here I'm not gonna take it off completely because obviously you get the hood latch in the way but after you move it to the side like that you have these two I'm not sure if there's any more on the bottom I'll let you know while I'm moving along here so I got these side of the hoses disconnected already and then now I'm gonna get onto the oil lines. Okay, she's ready to come out. The only other thing is, so obviously these two screws have to be, bolts have to be separated from the condenser. Uh, all the water lines are off. There's two on the driver's side and then one water line and two oil lines on the passenger side. And the only other thing is this uh, air suction induction hose here has to be taken out because the rad will not clear you see here it's got this weird shape there now it should just go straight out yep. there's actually a little 10 mil here on the very bottom of the rad that you have to undo i tried pulling it up and it wouldn't come up so this is a little mercedes surprise there so there that is <coughs> You can see the fittings here. That's what this sucker looks like. Now this is not from age. There's nothing wrong with this radiator. Somebody gouged it here when they were doing something under there. It's right here. This is actually very fixable with radiator repair. Solder, solder, clean this up and solder this back up. If this rat doesn't show up today, I might even fix this. See the punctures right there. Okay, back at this next day. Got some bad news this morning from the company I ordered the radiator from. They said it just became back ordered. They can't get it for me for another 10 days. Uh, <laughs> this thing at Mercedes is 700 some dollars. Hey guys, call me crazy, but I decided to fix this. If you have a look at this. It's a very tiny little pinhole bend right there. Of course, prepping this, you will damage some of these fins but yeah, this thing's got plenty of fins. So, as you saw before, that uh, pinhole was very, very tiny. So what I did is I used a product called Water Weld, which is uh, water and chemical resistant. And what I did is, can't see it now because I already fixed it, but on the pinhole, I spread the pinhole a little bit bigger I opened up the uh, water jacket and I, and I needed that uh, water weld product inside. Uh, the water weld stuff dries quite quickly. It's about 30 minutes. So before it dried, I compressed the water jacket 
until some of that product came out and then I smoothed it out with my finger over top of it. Then I used a standard 6000 PSI JB Weld product, which works great on aluminum. Uh, and I basically put it over top of the whole area. Of course, this area, I acid etched it. I cleaned it really well. I sanded it, you see, I, I pushed the fins in. I pushed the fins in on both sides so I can sand and get a nice surface contact. Uh, also, when I opened up the little hole, when I was uh, putting the water weld in there, before I put the water weld in there, I sprayed brake cleaner in there and I applied heat to it and I sprayed brake cleaner and I applied heat to it just to make sure all of that contamination from the coolant is gone. So this will hold guaranteed. I've done this before. Of course, I don't like having something like this on my car. So once that new rad shows up, I'll have to throw that sucker back in. But for now, this will do just so we can put this together and finally drive this. A new belt for it. Since I'm in there, might as well change the belt. Uh, this belt, if you specify, if you don't go to Mercedes and you go to a parts store and you specify a 95 Mercedes C36, they give you a 85.8 millimeter belt. Tried putting that on, that doesn't work, it's too short. So I think this is a breakover year again. So you need an 87.5 for this model. Now the best thing to do would be to go to Mercedes and get the length of the belt, if you don't want to buy the belt from them, and then go to a parts store and save yourself some money. So putting this back together, transmission lines first, the bottom transmission line, then the coolant hose here, the small coolant hose, top transmission line, and then we'll put on these coolant hoses here. I won't put the shrouds on just yet. I'll run it to make sure that the leak is good and fixed. Don't forget the bottom transmission line mounting to the radiator that gave us trouble when we were taking this out. Okay guys, all put together. I don't have the shrouds on, like I said. Nice and quiet, no squeaks, no nothing. Of course, the rat is no longer leaking. I didn't, I wasn't really doubting that. But as I mentioned to you in my previous episode, whenever you wash these engines, you always risk having them not run correctly afterwards. And since I washed this because I made a mess with my transmission lines. So side note, when you have the rad out, do not start your engine. I started it because I wanted to see uh, what the pulleys run like when I actually had good access to it. And I forgot that the transmission cooler lines were off and I spilled transmission fluid all over the place. But anyway, so I pressure washed it and look at that. <laughs> that is now full of water and it's misfiring like crazy. So we have to dry all this up, blow it all out. So yeah, again, Whenever you pressure wash these engines, be very careful. These old Mercedes, they, they don't like to be washed. Okay guys, she finally runs beautiful. So what had happened is because I got all this water into this coil pack, this one here underneath, it must have shorted the coil pack out, and I had to replace this coil. Now we're back to running beautiful, nice and quiet. No fluid went missing overnight. So finally we can put this sucker back together. I got my little helper today. Hi Sabrina. Hi. <laughs> Here we'll change the plugs as well. I don't think they've been done for a while. They don't look too good. The electrode is still pretty good, but they're kind of dirty. Okay, new plugs are in. You guys gotta be really careful with these vacuum lines here, for instance. The stuff is kind of brittle. I actually cracked one taking this coil out. So I just put a piece of uh, 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 air hose and connected the two lines together. But yeah, keep that in mind. 
older cars, you gotta be kind of gentle with them. Now we'll put it back together. I think finally we can take it for a rip. Right, Sabrina? <laughs> okay guys, first drive. Let's see what this thing is all about. Where's like a kitten now? Runs nice and smooth. My efforts were not in vain. Oh, this is a lousy camera mount that I bought. Looks like it's shaking the camera all over. Traction control works. Still got some snow on the ground here. Yeah, I wouldn't want to drive this thing year round. This is the era of the Mercedes open diff in a performance car. So kind of horrible actually. Okay, temperature is up to snuff. Open up a little bit. Oh, nice. Oh, this thing is tight. Oh, this sucker is tight. No squeaks, no rattles, no pulling. Just a little bit here at the next stoplight. Holy! I can't believe how tight this thing is after all these years. Nice quick freeway pull here. Rolling start. Wow. This thing's only got a four speed automatic transmission. Oh, this puppy likes the rev. I got my traction control on because if I shut it off it wants to go sideways as soon as I try to full throttle launch it let's turn around here those are not the greatest for this still a lot of sand and stuff on these roads I think this thing will keep up with my Trans Am. This sucker revs. Okay guys, so it looks like this series is going to come to an end. I've been driving the car for the last week. The weather has been nice. Uh, runs and drives great. My airbag light went off after the first couple of days of driving it. Uh, the idle is a little bit uneven. So I'm a, I might have to look into that a little bit, uh, see if there's a vacuum leak or something. Doesn't affect anything. The, obviously the oil um, level sensor I still have to work on. Once I do the next oil change, I'll, uh, I'll look into it when, when the oil pan is empty. Maybe I missed something, maybe I installed it upside down, I don't know. I'll have to check. 
Uh, the rad it looks like it showed up because somebody just gave me a call today, so I'm gonna throw the new rad in since it's here. And then other than that, probably the exhaust. I'll take it to a shop. Sorry, I couldn't show it to you guys, but the weather has been nasty, and I wanted to finish off this uh, this uh, revival. So yeah, might post some other videos of this thing. Maybe doing some pulls against other cars. Maybe against my Trans Am. We'll see if the weather holds up. I'll take the Trans Am out. But yeah, that's about it for that one.